Welcome back to Amanda Plays Games. Today we are playing the Stanley Parable. Now, I am still playing Tears of the Kingdom, um, but I wanted to do other games kind of interspersed into my main long gameplays. Um, that way my attention span doesn't get too, I don't know, tired or too overwhelmed. So I've heard that this is a game that um, doesn't necessarily take super duper long to complete. So we will go ahead and play it. I don't know if it'll be one episode. I don't know if it'll be a few. But I figured we could give it a go. I have it. I have never touched it. Um, when the game came out, I very vaguely know kind of what it's about in that we are in some kind of office and we just either do what the voice tells us to do or don't do what the voice tells us to do. I guess it's kind of an open ended. I think it has multiple endings. I don't know. We'll find out. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and click begin the game. I do like that on your computer monitor it shows. It's kind of funny. Okay. So we'll see. See how we like this. This is also the first game that I'm playing on this channel where it is a PC game and not on the Switch. Given that so far I've just played the Breath of the or the Legend of Zelda games. But I actually do have quite <coughs> excuse me, an extensive library of um, PC games many of which I have never touched at all. So I was going to try to kind of play through those with this and see how I like them. Now, I'm trying to think up a fun name for the, um, the off series that I do. It would kind of be fun, like, I don't know. I'm trying to think up some fun names like Free Play Friday or something. This is the story oh. of a man named Stanley. Okay. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Okay. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Nice. Orders came to him through a monitor at the desk telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. Okay. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul ending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in. Nice. Though he had been made exactly for this job. Mm -hmm. And Stanley was happy. I mean, I guess it's kind of a... And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Oh. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single <clears throat> order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Hmm. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Okay, I think that's it for the intro. Oh, there we go. So as I was saying, um, I guess it seems like a pretty easy job, but also I would not want to sit in my in my desk for eight hours a day just pushing buttons. So I guess we'll go out here. Pretty simple controls. Just all uh, of his co-workers oh. were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay. So it's pretty simple controls. Just WASD to move. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. 
<laughs> and then E maybe to interact. That's how I was jiggling the doors. Oh, I turned off that. Or clicking, I guess. Okay. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, <laughs> but it didn't make a single difference. Okay. Nor did it advance the story in any way. Okay, geez. Feeling called out. Sad that I can't. All right. Oh, better turn off this computer. Oh, my mouse sensitivity might be a little high. Thought for a second that was blood. Ooh, okay. So A, the audio is way loud. I'm being deafened here. How do I turn this down? And let's see. Okay. And I might need to do, can I change the mouse sensitivity? Uh, nope. Aspect ratio. Mouse sensitivity. Oh, it's already way low. Turn it down just a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, let's see if that helps. Okay, now I'm not like being deafened. Holy moly, that was so loud. I wish I could like zoom in and take a look at some of these pictures or papers. Okay, meeting room. Nope, can't go in there. Coffee spilt. Okay. This is kind of a dank looking office, if I say so myself. When Stanley came to a oh. set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, so I have the option here. I can, I guess for the first go through, I'll just do what the narrator says. So on my left. Okay. Let's not get too sidetracked. Whoa. I see what happened. Nuclear apocalypse. Man, and we're stuck at work. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping mm. he might find an answer there. Can I sit down in this chair? Nope. Okay. Using slides to assure employees. Oh. Everyone is, is unique. You most of all. Nice. Next slide, please. Number of slides on this slide. Nice. Slides, charts, and charts, and slides. Oh, it's a heavy chart-based slideshow. I like that. Nice. And here we have uh, synergized core value expenditures, shift global market parade, I'm sure. Unless parade is something that I don't know. Monetize, free to play. Okay. It's a broom closet. Oh, I can go in the broom closet. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here. So he turned around and got back on track. All right. We'll do the first playthrough where we listen to him. Upstairs. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Not that one. Oh, the open door. Okay. Uh, is this the boss's office? Holy moly, it's like a suite. 
executive bathroom. Oh, I had to go, but I guess I'll hold it. Oh, I can't go back there. Okay. Nope. Okay. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, <coughs> unraveled, Stanley wondered Excuse in disbelief me. who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. Oh, and no. so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two, eight, four, five. Got and it. Of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. 2845, got it. I just want to say, this is quite the office. Look how high these ceilings are. Holy moly. Okay. Two. Stanley just sat eight, around twiddling his four, thumbs. Five. Trying to input, yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. Oh. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Okay. I uh, can't see anything wandering around in the dark. Get into this scary elevator. That's great. I can't imagine that that won't be just amazing. So, so far, I have no idea what could be the purpose for everyone disappearing. Deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. Uh, do it I? Was a stirring of emotion in his chest. Oh. Though he felt more free to think for himself. Oh. To question the nature of his job. <gasps> Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question hmm. would not go unanswered for long. Why do I sit at my desk for eight hours a day, I'm assuming, and push buttons that a computer tells me to push? Hmm... Well, this is scary. I would not walk through this if I was. I would just leave. Walk straight ahead through the large door that uh -oh. mind control facility. Um. Okay, if you say so. Escape. Okay, so see, because this is the first time, and I'm doing what the voice tells me to do. Uh, I'm not thinking that deeply about why I do the things that I do. So this right here, this escape, would not uh, interest me. I'd be like, hmm, I wonder what my life is, but I guess I'll just do what it says. Okay. Yes. The lights nice. rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. It is pretty what big. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Yeah. Did he have the strength to find out? Maybe. I am pretty weak-willed right now, so... Oh. So we'll see. Can I jump? Nope. The normal jumping button doesn't work. Now the monitors jump to life. Ah. Oh. Each bore the number of an employee in the building. Fired. Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley... One of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Huh. And everybody is gone. But the aliens took them. What was mine? 247? Employee 247? Whoops. I looked away for five seconds. Two forty seven, right there. Okay, go again. It's not even looking at my desk, it's looking at my filing cabinet system. 
This mind control facility. Oh, it was fired. Too horrible to fired. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Probably. I mean, that's what I can imagine. No. He refused to believe it. He oh. couldn't <laughs> accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Never. Wasn't it? Was it mm. even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? I guess it depends. You got paid, didn't you? Does it really matter? <laughs> but here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Oh, no. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad oh. or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. Oh, and no. as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For okay. he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Nice. How do I do that? Power. Whoops. I don't have a reticle, a reticle or anything, so I don't know. I'm trying. How do I click it off? Offline. Yeah, that's what we want. Oh, by going this way. <sighs> this looks like a staircase. It's hard to see because it's dark as all get out in here. What am I looking at? Four. Oh, I see. Do I need to push buttons in a certain order? Oh. Uh, one. Here it is. Two. Maybe not. This looks suspicious and sinister. Maybe I don't push any buttons. It didn't tell me to push buttons. <coughs> Excuse me. Mind controls idle, awaiting input. Okay. System power. Aha! And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Yeah, turn it off. Although I didn't push the button, I tried to rip something out. So, either way it worked. Blackness. Mm -hmm. And a rising chill of uncertainty. Uh-oh. Was it over? Oh. Yes. Oh. He had won. It's like the Truman Show. He defeated the machine, unshackled himself from someone Yay. else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Hmm. Where had his co-workers gone? Hmm. How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? Hmm. What other mysteries did this strange building hold? Who knows? As sunlight streamed into the chamber. He realized none of this mattered to him. Don't care. Or it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. I'd love to. 
There we go. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon Oh, I can't look behind me at the feeling of liberation. The immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way right now that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Nice. And he just died of happiness or something? Beat the game. Cool beans. <coughs> Oops. All right, so here I am back at the office. So now let's do all the stuff he said not to do. So we will still go Before to the. Were gone, what could it mean? We'll go Stand to the first place. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. We'll go to the first place where there's the two doors. And instead of going left, we'll go right. Okay. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors. He entered the door on his left. I don't think so, sir. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Mm -hmm. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Maybe. Ah, yes. Truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Mm-hmm. So... <clears throat> Man, what a empty, dark yes, room. Yes, really, really worth it being here in the room. Mm -hmm. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Mm -hmm. Really worth it. Yes. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. All right, here's where we're branching off into some different options here. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. He's also kind of short. No offense or anything, Stanley, but these uh, architecture tables hit like my throat. Alright, what's this? Interesting, interesting. I don't have a key card. Is that something we can get? <clears throat> Do not jump from the cargo lift while it is in motion. Will cause death. Penalty for misuse of cargo lift, $1,000. Penalty for jumping off of the cargo lift, $5,000. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. Mm -hmm. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. What? Really? <laughs> in the middle of something, do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help <laughs> you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Well, don't say it creepy like that. Danger. Danger everywhere. I'm going in here. Into the danger zone. Taking a highway right to it. Oh, another option. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley <coughs> walked through the red door. Well, I'm not listening to you today. Uh -huh. Perhaps oh. you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. No, I want to go through the blue door. It's my favorite color. I still don't think we're communicating. Oh. <laughs> Stanley walked through the red door. 
Fine. Oh, thank God you are willing to listen to me. Do you see that I really have wanted you to be happy all this time? The problem is all these choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running mm -hmm. and running and running, just the way you're doing right now. Don't you mm -hmm. see that it's killing us, Stanley? No. I just, I want it to stop. Who is I us? Would, we would both be so much happier both. if we just stopped. And I think, well, I think I have a solution. Here, let me show you. Nope. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep going in circles. What you going to say about that, huh? Hmm? Hmm? Oh, somebody's at my door. How long do I have to circle before he says something? Ooh, I'm getting a little dizzy. Fine. <gasps> Loading screen. What do we want? What are we looking for? Hmm? I don't know. I guess it's just into the abyss. Here. Oh. Yes. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? If we just stay right here. Right in this moment with this place, Stanley, I think I feel happy. I actually feel happy. <laughs> no, wait, where are well, you going? Into this unfinished drywall room. I guess I'll just go this oh, no. way. Stay away from those stairs. If you hurt yourself, if you die, the game will reset. We'll lose all of this. Okay. Well... I don't like falling downstairs, so just don't do something that makes me fall down the stairs. Please, no, Stanley, let me stay here. Don't take this from me. Uh oh. Oh no. Do I have to jump off of this? I'm not a fan of this. I guess we'll go backwards. No. Oh, I broke oh. both my legs. Ah. Oh. You lived. You have me. No. <laughs> I no, guess no. I have what to go back doing, up Stanley? again. <laughs> I'm asking you not to take this away from me. I can't go back to what I was before. If you die, we'll both go back. Why are you doing this? What were you before? Stanley, let's go back to the other room. What were you oh before? God. Is this really how much you dislike my game? That you'll throw yourself from this platform over and over to be rid of it? You were literally willing to kill yourself to keep me from being happy. Am I reading the situation correctly? Maybe you're just getting a kick out of it. I don't know anymore. I just wanted us to get along. But I guess that was too much to ask. Mm -hmm. It looks like you wanted to make a choice after all. Well, this one is yours. Oh! Is over? I guess so. To restart, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going back. Maybe he also doesn't like just tell me what to do all the time. Was that a, not an achievement? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay, so this time we'll go through the left door again. But were there th that escape section? We'll go there. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. <coughs> Excuse me. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Okay. Let's go up to the boss's office. Shouldn't to a staircase. Let's Stanley go down. Walked upstairs to his boss's office. Let's go down. Let's see what's going down. Ooh. Red. Some boxes down here. Flattened boxes or something. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? 
Who knows? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Mm -hmm. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All uh -oh. of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley oh, pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. Mm -hmm. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? <gasps> why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? <gasps> and for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Mm -hmm. Simply repeating. <clears throat> no, Stanley said to himself, <gasps> this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. Yeah. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming. There we go. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. Okay. He thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well mm -hmm. enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So... He imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Hey. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field. And it too appeared. It oh. was so much fun. And Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. Mm -hmm. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head <laughs> dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley. Mm -hmm. He found it particularly strange. <laughs> I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. Mm -hmm. And while he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. <laughs> how could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believe oh, man. <laughs> that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Am I? Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? Yeah. How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. Mm -hmm. That this was a dream. How? So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. Okay, he wake up. the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Okay. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. Wake up. I'm through with this dream. I'm I done. wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. Mm -hmm. I am normal. I am Everything normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. I am not a robot. I'm still here in the parking garage. Stanley began screaming. Please, ah. someone wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss, I have an office, I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real, I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Oh, jeez. <clears throat> I'm in a coma. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Oh, Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her <gasps> place. Of oh, my God. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Oh, and no. And she would soon turn to go to <coughs> the ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange <clears throat> man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. 
And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am <laughs> in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Wow. Didn't call 911 or anything, huh? Okay, so we got a good ending, I guess, where we got to go, like, be free in the universe. Uh, an ending where I don't know what happened. And then one where we had some kind Stan of aneurysm and died. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay. We had like an aneurysm and died. And there when Stanley came was to nothing to do about it. Doors, he entered the door on his left. I don't know how many endings there are to this game. Yet there was not a single Whoops. person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Oh no, oh no 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 not again. I won't be part of this. I'm not going to encourage oh. you. I'm not going to say anything at all. I'm just going to be patient and wait for you to finish whatever it is you enjoy doing so much in this room. Please take your time. In the broom closet? I really like it in here. Okay, we can be done. Oops. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay, the boss's office. Here's this. Stepping into his manager's office. Stanley was Do I remember this? stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, <laughs> he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. <laughs> Sorry. Kind of anxiety isn't healthy. So he Sorry. relaxed for a few moments with some calming new age music. Mm, I love it. I'll do a little dance. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, okay. Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. Okay. Oops, sorry. I ran into that light. Okay, we'll go down an elevator. So now we're qu really questioning everything. Now we want to know what's going on. So, whereas last time I just went to the mind control room, this time I'm going to go to the es exit. Escape. This looks different. Doesn't it? No, it's still creepy. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read mind control facility. Nope, I'm going Although to the this escape. passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Oh no. Well, I guess. Why not? I've already died once. Or twice. I did. I killed myself the, the other time. was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Nope. We'll go. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward mm -hmm. and willingly confront his death. Yes. You gotta be willing. Head on. Oop. Yep, I fell down a hole. Ooh, I'm still falling. Oh, yo, yo. The machine whirred into motion, and Stanley was inched closer and closer. <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> it reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. 
He doesn't know the real story. Okay. He's trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. So he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Well, Stanley. Farewell. <laughs> it's been fun. Farewell, Stanley, oh. cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. Oh, In yeah. a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Oh. Or not. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, look at that. The Stanley parable. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? Oh. When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, uh -huh. death becomes meaningless, making That's life true. the same. Do you see now? Uh -huh. Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? I mean, I kind of guessed. Solitaire. Employee database. Nice. Okay. And then... Ah, so this is like the behind the scenes thing. Button sounds. Okay. The office. Cool. So this is like the behind the scenes stuff, right? The two doors. Okay. The corridor. Ah, okay. This is the office layout. So this is my office, right? And then you go through and you can like turn and then you go through some more and then you eventually get to here where there are two room, two doors. Okay, cool. This is pretty cool. So this is all the credits and paintings. I don't think this is the story anymore. I think it's just done until it resets you. Written and designed by Davy Redden and Philliam Pugh. Pooh? Sorry. Additional level designs. Colin Eddings and Jack Parsons. Programming. Jesus Higueres. Sorry again. Sound design. Robin Arnott. Eduardo Ortiz. And the impeccable Kevin... Brighting as the narrator. Good job, Mr. Kevin. Original music. Model design. Good job. This is great. Boss's office. Very impressive. Mind control facility. The narrator outshakes. Then he pushed the lever again. Stanley stood on his feet. Huh, interesting. This is very impressive. And this is freedom ending. Okay. The freedom ending. Countdown room. Oh, uh, just a bright white window. What's this? Zending. 
Interesting. Escape menu. Uh oh. Uh oh, I don't know what happened. Oh no! Uh, oh no! It won't let me. Well, I think that's it, you guys. <laughs> So we got a few endings, and I might look up how to get the other ones, and we might um, try to get some of the other ones, but for now, I think that's pretty, oh, nope, I think that's pretty um, good. We got a couple bad endings, a good ending, the happiest ending, where you're free, and we died a few times, a couple times, so... And I was dead all along, so it doesn't even matter. So thank you everyone and anyone who was watching. And we'll see you in the next new game. Bye-bye.